Well, good morning. We're back in the world of Eternum, and as you can see, we are at the Shattered Obelisk. And we have to defeat several ancient guardians and search the Shattered Obelisk for an armillary spear. Now, I actually did look up the astrolabe, and it turns out it is a real thing. So, it's an ancient astronomical instrument. There was a handheld model of the universe. It actually looks like a flat disc, and it basically had, I guess, the sun, the moon, the planets, and it can be used to identify star to planet, determine local latitude given local time, to survey or to triangulate. Sometimes it's a flat disc, sometimes it actually looks like a globe, but um, it's been around since at least the 13th century, maybe even before that. So that was pretty cool to find out that it is actually a real thing. Let us get started in here. While we're doing this, we're going to talk about some of the updates, including the fact that they are taking the coin sellers very seriously. So they it says they have banned and suspended many reported accounts. Oh, it might help if I switch weapons. They've also added certain restrictions to help slow down people from creating new accounts so that they can create new gold spammers, which prevents player-to-player -player trading and currency transfer from char for characters under level 10 or whose account is less than 72 hours old. Logging in after your account is 72 hours old will enable you to trade and transfer currency once you've hit level 10. Redistributing coin value from some early quest to later in the main story, keeping the total amount of coin earned the same, just delivering in quest slightly later, which means that they can't farm the very first few quests, get a bunch of coins, pass it off to the next bot, and amass wealth that way. And the trading post used will is restricted until new characters accept the introduction to trading post quest. So you can't, like, just log on to the beach, gather a bunch of stuff, take it to town, sell it, make a bunch of money, and then turn around and try to sell it. So these are all good things, and it might be working because I have been logged in for a little while, and I have yet to see... A single gold selling ad yet. So, cross our fingers that we will have to deal with a lot less of that in the future. Come here. Die, why don't you? Okay. Oh, you gave me a strong mana potion. Very good. I'm going to switch over to the gauntlet real quick. Let's see who we're going to kill first. We're going to kill you over here because you're the one that's actually on the move. All right, very good. So we got two more in there. And OK, 
Okay, I guess we're going this way. All right. An ancient coffer. We have an inscription of some sort here, which we've already read. All right. So, don't think what we're looking for is going to be in here. This is where we forged our Azo staff. Which I guess that's why we have all these guardians protecting it because it seems to be a nice source of Azoth. And they don't, I mean, obviously they're your enemy. They're definitely not your friend. But are they evil? That's debatable. Anyway, so moving on in the patch notes. They say that they have fixed a bug where players were able to duplicate items via storage sheds and crafting stations. I didn't know that was a thing. And they fixed the issue of gold duplicating on territory products that they introduced by disabling trading. And made sure it would not occur in the future should they need to disable trading again. Another thing I didn't know was a thing. Well, I kind of heard something but obviously since i don't own any territories i there's a whole lot of combat fixes um not all of them are really great they removed the small area of effect aoe that were triggering on pass through from every hit of the base version of arbor protection so I guess it no longer triggers on pass through. It'll only trigger on impact against an enemy or object. You know, somebody puts down a healing circle. People want to be able to get in it and get the benefit. I'm not sure how that works. It doesn't sound like a good change to a healer's rotation. But I guess there was... The problem with people teabagging the healing circle and getting healed up really super duper fast. Thanks so much people who like to take advantage of bugs. They've reduced the attribute respec coin by 60%. So... It costs a lot less to respect now. Which, for people like me, that's a good thing because, you know, I don't respect because I don't want to waste my money on respecting. They've also reduced Weapon Mastery Respec Azoth cost by 75%. That's huge. Even if I haven't done any Weapon Respec, that's still... I know that's huge. Reduced the coin cost of chisels by 20 to 50%, depending on the tier. Um... I don't know what chisels are. I think they have something to do with the tuning orbs that you use to get into expeditions. They've re slightly reduced the coin and Azoth reward for the losing team of Outpost Rush to try to encourage people to actually participate, which is... Not going to do a lot of good for the low population servers. I have been he hearing things where people are saying that their servers have very low pop. So I don't know how that's supposed to help. Oh, and you cannot have the same weapon in two slots anymore. 
because I hear some people were running dual life staffs and were practically unkillable as a result. Not sure why that was a thing. Unless, of course, you're running solo and, hey, maybe you didn't want to deal with dying every five minutes. Ah, oh, we found an armillary spear. Okay. So we need to take that back to William Heron. And how are we going to do that? We're going to just jump right down here. Kill you. Oh, we have something in here. We have a chest in here or something? I think we do. We also have a guy we need to kill for it. I don't know what I just got. A common regen potion. Okay, I'll take it. Oh, looks like maybe we already got that. Okay. All right, so, oh, I love the the pretty, you know, it looks like looks like northern lights with all the blues and greens and purples. Very pretty. Of course, we don't have time to properly appreciate it right now. We're fighting stuff. Oh, come here. Thank you. Alright. So, where are we? Oh, we're on the other end. Well, we should go this way. That's okay. We're having fun. Oh, look. It's some nice ten sun creeper. So there is a lot of other things, like um, they fixed an issue that allowed PVPers and PVEers to heal each other. Um, well, I mean, it kind of sucks because, you know, I, I see somebody who needs help. I don't care if they're PVP or not. I try to help them out. And if I have my life staff on me, I obviously help them out by healing them. That means I won't be able to do that if somebody is PVP. Even though... As a PvE, or I have no skin in that game. But I guess that does stop a PvE -er from healing a PvP -er during a PvP battle, and of course, the other PvP -er can't do anything about it because they can't attack the healer. Die already. Thank you. Wow, there's a lot of lot of you. A lot more of you here now. That's okay. We're having fun killing you all. Alright, so where are we? Does it matter? We should be going in the right direction. What's in here? Uh, nothing. Just more runs. Just more runs. 
Very nice ruins. Pretty. Is there a camp over here? Like a whole encampment? Uh, looks like it's been abandoned. Oh, it's not been abandoned. Hi. Kind of been abandoned. I mean, <laughs> what's this behind there? Oh, a soul sprout. Good. So I think I sold some soul motes. I'm actually up to almost 7,500 gold. Where are we now? That's a cat. We don't want to attack the kitty cat. Press F3 to fish. I am not fishing right here. Thank you very much. There are skeletons. There are kitty cats. There are everythings. And I don't feel like attacking the... Ooh, that's pretty. I don't feel like attacking the kitty cats. Let's back up a little bit. I want that. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Very pretty. Alright, so. Which way are we going? Think we're going this way? No, no. We're going the wrong way. Oh, good. Goodness gracious. We're going the wrong way again. Okay. Now. Very good. Well, that was fun. I enjoyed that a lot. But now we have this astrolabe that William Heron needs. And we can bring it back to him. So, where were we? There was a lot of things with Outpost Brush. There are some general bug fixes. Oh. Two Fort Crossing. We're way over here? I guess we are. Wow. How do we manage to do that? I don't know. But I guess we're going to kill these guys too. There we go. But yeah, there was a whole lot of stuff done in the update. But the big thing for me was the fact that they are actively working on the coin sellers. Now, there was some new talk. And one of the things that they did was link the trade houses so now instead of having to go to different territories to check out different trade houses you can check all trade houses from anywhere and i guess also make buys and sells from anywhere Which I'm on the fence about. We'll see how that goes. But I think that's not going to help the economy. If anything, it's going to make the price of everything 
cheaper which will mean that people who rely on the trade house to make money for their houses their gear and everything else will be making less of it which means well they're going to spend less of it because they don't have it maybe i'll be i'll be proven wrong i don't know but that's usually how things work if you don't have money you don't spend it and it is definitely still a challenge to make money for people who are running on their own all right not the biggest challenge you do have to put a little work into it though which obviously i have no trouble doing else i wouldn't have almost 7500 gold right now Ooh, what do we have over here it's pretty can we get it we can it's soul spire it's the amethyst looking stuff well if amethyst had electricity running through it crystalline lodestone and some soul motes and of course iron we have to get that something else they seem to be doing is they're amping the potency of expedition in other words they're making them better they're increasing the coin gained from expedition bosses starting at starstone barrows by 25% and ramping up to in-game expeditions by 100% per boss. They're reducing the coin cost of each of the tuning orbs and increasing the corrupted swords player earned from minor or major corrupted breaches and reducing the coin cost of chisels by 20 to 50 to percent depending on the tier. So that will be that will be a good thing for the people who like to run expeditions it'll be cheaper to get in they'll get more from it i think that's the only ore i see here all right now it seems like this here would be a nice little place to fish i don't see any mobs nearby that doesn't mean they aren't there i just don't see them So we need to go back here and talk to William Heron. We also need to run past the task board and turn in one of those things, which was to kill some turkeys, which I already did off screen. Because while it may be funny to watch Miss Bella chase turkeys around, nobody has time for that. Can we cross this way? Maybe save a couple seconds. yeah we did not have much uh flint on us so always good to grab a couple okay some hemp so i think we already touched on the gold sellers the coin farming and i've already talked about some of the things that they have done to combat that and, like I said, I have not 
I have yet to see a single gold selling ad this morning. So, yay for that. That doesn't mean they won't come back. It just means it's going to take them longer to make a bot. And the longer it takes them to make a bot, the less profitable the venture is. The less profitable, profitable the venture is, the less likely they are to attempt it. I mean, they can't spam chat if they can't enter chat, nor would they spam chat if they did not have the product to sell to begin with, which they can't have unless they're leveling up their bots. Yay. That's all I can say about that. Yay, 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 yay for that. So there was a whole bunch of other stuff that I barely touched on. Like I said, a lot of it had to do with PvP, Outpost Rush, Expeditions. They made a big, huge list of changes. Some of them, like linking the trade houses, I will reserve judgment on, though I don't see that being the most positive thing for people who use the trading house to make money. It might be, it's a seller's, no, it's a buyer's market. When products, there's a lot of products and they're cheap, it's a buyer's market. The reduction to any cost, especially expedition and wars, always good. That actually would encourage people to do it more if they weren't worried about how much it costs to get in or how much it costs to repair after the fact. So, yeah, I can see where now the risk-to-reward ratio is a little better. Oh, look, one to gather and deliver aged wood. We could do that one. And let's take a look at chat because there's been... Almost nothing in area help and faction this morning. And it looks like everything in recruitment is, well, except for the occasional random chatter, what it's supposed to be. And global chat looks like it is clean. So, yep, yep, the gold sellers are quiet right now. All right, let's go find Mr. Heron and deliver him this armillary that he's been dying to have, quite literally, because from the pages scattered about, I think he's been to these places himself a few times and died a few times. Did you really? To enter the obelisk and return it, it defies logic. Let me see the armillary sphere. Yes, yes, this will activate the towers. Your part is done. That's it? No, quite the contrary. I must say I have never met my equal. Until now, your strength and dedication made this possible, not my intellect. I am honored to know you. Oh, thank you. So, I have... You've done so much for me in my research, friend. You remind me of one of my former colleagues, Simon Gray. We had a bit of a rivalry, as you might imagine. Okay, what happened to him? 
Simon led the expedition into the Amarine excavation of Windsor many years ago, and never returned. I still say the real genius behind Simon was his foreman, who mapped every ancient ruin in all the time. What happened to the foreman? Who knows? He never returned from the excavation either. I assume they're both dead. Or worse. Say that. If some bold soul such as yourself were to get me the foreman's ledger, I would offer a handsome reward. So, that is another Ormine ex Expedition quest. And we have two of those now. Where was the other one? Oh, yeah. So, this goes to Armine Excavation. And this goes to Armine Excavation. And if you get to the area where Armine Excavation is, there's a third one for a dog, dog named Barkamedes. So, that means three different quests lead or funnel into this... Exp excavation. So at some point we're going to have to figure out how to get a join a group to do that. But right now, let's see what else can, can we do. Where is this one at? Way, way down here in first light. Okay, so that's where the fishing one is, and that is way down here. Okay, nope. What else we got? Oh, that's right. We did say if we found ourselves done here, we'd go to Monarch's Bluff. And that's Winsward. This is, where's this one? Right, where is really, 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 really? Come on. Uh, Pirate stronghold. Pride of Pucket. That's down here in one's word. So we got a couple. Well, that's all the Armine Expedition stuff. Because that's where Armine is. We got two open in one's word. Hmm. Well. We also have two available in one's word. So, I do still think we're going to go with our first instinct and go back to Monarch's Bluff, finish anything open there, and then go down to Wind's word so we can leisurely take care of everything there. So, let me go ahead and get there, and I will be back with you shortly. Okay, we're back, and you can see we're in Monarch's Bluff now, and I have found our two quests that are here. One of them is our friend Versina, and the other one is our very good friend Geordi in there. So, let's talk to them and see what they want this time. For the latest catastrophe, all the crops are spoiled. Even if we do manage to defend against corruption, We'll starve in here. We'll find a way. Perhaps. I have a mind to strike out on my own at this point. If I'm gonna stay, you're gonna have to help me convince Seville to do something. How should I do that? I don't know. You're the genius here. I'm just a common survivalist. I'd say gather some spoiled crops from the lakeside farm, then deliver them to Seville. We're the shop, I say. Okay, so... She wants me to go lakeside 
farm and gather some crops. Bad news. The feast is called off. The honey pigs and wine will have to be rationed. We're facing a food shortage. Oh no, what happened? I was all set, had the stew brewing and everything, and then I go to add the vegetables and they're spoiled. It's the third time this season. I'm beginning to think all of the crops in the region are ruined. How can we find out? I'm not sure. There's a theory that the spoiled crops might have something to do with the wither. I suppose it's worth a check. Farside Township. It's overrun these days. If you can find some squash growing, bring it back and I'll take a look. Okay, so she wants me to go to Farside Township. And our survivalist friend wants us to go to Lakeside Farm. So where are these at? Well, fortunately for us, again, they are very close to each other. Because, yay. <laughs> that makes life easier. And while we're out, we're going to rustle a few bushes. See if we can't find some woodlouse bait for the task board here. I know I keep calling it a task board. It's a town project board. But I'm so used to seeing something like that in Lotro. And, well, in Lotro, we call them task boards. Because technically, that's all it is. Uh, not a single wood louse yet. You've got to be kidding me. Well, we'll have plenty of wood to set a camp, and we probably should. Oh, look, we got a couple. Of course, we need 20 more. We actually need more than 20 more, because we'd like to have some wood louse for our own fishing. Thank you. <laughs> I look over to the front door, and there are cats happily staring outside. I do believe I've mentioned that these are spoiled animals. And just to prove how spoiled they actually are. In the morning, after they've eaten, they congregate near the front door. Now, why do they do that? Because they want to look outside. So, I have actually gotten into the habit of taking a couple plain old cardboard boxes... You know, the kind you get from Amazon that you got your stuff shipped in. And I open the front door. And, of course, we got the screen door there. And I set those boxes in front of the screen door. And the cats jump up on the boxes and they can look out the door to their heart's content. And depending on the weather, I'll even... Pull the window up so that they can smell outside too. Right now it's a little chilly today. It, it was a nice, a nice breezy 31 degrees this morning, so the window is just barely cracked open because, you know, don't don't need all that cold air inside the house. But it's just enough for the kitty cats to enjoy their look outside. So yeah, sometimes it's a very, it's the little things, and it's very cheap to amuse a cat, because if anybody knows anything about cats, you can buy them the most expensive fancy cat, do cat toy with all the gee-haws and doodads and whatchamacallits. But they inevitably want to play with the box it came in. Well, you were not the brightest turkey ever, were you? We are up to, oh, we got 23 air moats. can't remember if I sold any of those this morning. I don't think they're selling at the moment. Still, 
I believe they are useful. And are we going the right way? I don't know if we can or if we are. Oh, well, we're at. Kind of. <laughs> I guess we are. I don't think that thing even noticed me. Ooh, look at all that. Yes, please. I'll take some of this. I have no idea what warm plate cap is supposed to actually represent. If you have tryptophobia, you probably won't like that plant because it's definitely full of holes. Alright, so we are still going the right way. So you can see I'm still kind of running the Warhammer Ice Gauntlet combo. I'm just doing that to level up the skills a little. That's a boar. Okay. Finally got you. Boy, aiming. I swear I can do it. Wow, there's a lot of life blooms here. Oh, oh! I'm sorry. These aren't life blooms. They're river crust. Although I think up there there's life blooms. Might as well get them all. Might as well get them all. And I'm not gonna do anything silly like. <clears throat> Thing, gotta catch them all. But that's what it feels like at the moment. There's our life blooms. We got two of them here, so that's a decent amount. We had plate caps and life blooms and river crests. And I'm starting to remember that it's river crests and not water crests, which is a whole different different plant. Wow, there's turkeys everywhere here. Well, we're gonna have a lot of turkey. I have a lot of turkey to make foods with. Speaking of foods. Yeah, we do need to make some of those soon. Need to make some food soon. What's that over? Ooh. Is that Scorch Stone? I think it is. I think this is Scorch Stone. It is. So now we can get some fire motes, too. These things make such neat sounds. Now, which way we're we going first? The lake side is 245 that way, but far side is 160 this way. So we'll do far side first. And what are we doing here at? Oh, we're getting squash here. Okay. Harvest a squash. Okay, so we have to find a squash to harvest. Oh, and look, conveniently located squash. And I guess that's all we have to do. We're going to grab a couple more squash because why not? Uh, 
Oh, here comes this thing again. Wow. You must be as blind as a bat. Well, considering you're kind of bat-like in appearance, I guess that makes perfect sense. All right, so that one's done. Well, that was the easiest thing ever. I don't think the other one's going to be quite so easy. Ooh. Dragon Glory. <coughs> More fire emotes. Fire emotes. Why did I call it an emote? And we're up to 36 fire emotes. And about, what, a dozen turkeys? Like I said, we're having lots of turkey for dinner. Nine of them. That's still quite a bit. So we need to go down this way. We can see our destination ahead. Harvest corn. Okay, so we need to harvest, find and harvest some corn in here. Which means we've got to find some crops. Let's see, what do you got over there? Nothing. Oh, that's what's hitting me. What? Throwing up on me. Thank you. And I should probably eat again. Definitely need to make some food soon. Just a bush. Let's clear out some of these bushes so I can see ahead. Oh, look, we have more things to kill. Yeah, hi. I told you to quit throwing up on me. Oh, don't ever listen. Um, okay. Obviously, there are no crops inside the house. Oh, heck, I forgot about that big boy. Farmer Sneed. Not that we couldn't take him, but it's not what I'm here for. I don't feel like having to take him right now. I feel like grabbing corn and getting out of here. That is not corn. Oh, there's a blueberry bush. Well, that's convenient. <laughs> Grab those. And 
I see no corn here. Huh. All right, a lot of mobs are right here. Luckily, Farmer Sneed doesn't seem to be able to see very far. Oh, is that corn up ahead? I hope so. I hope so. Yay, corn. He's mad that I took his corn he was coming for. Good thing I got to it before he decided to throw up all over it. Because, ew. Couldn't use that corn then. We're going to get a couple extra corn. Because they're useful. All right, one more, and we can head back to town with our findings. Turkey, 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 turkey. Hello, piggy. And what do we have over here? Squash. I was kind of hoping for some carrots. But I didn't see any. But we know there's squash and corn there. Always good to know. rushes. See if we can't get some buds. No, but we could get some firefly bait. And that wasn't bull rushes, that was water. Oh no, it's not bull rushes that have the buds, it's briars. Okay. I have still yet to sit down here and figure out the day-night cycle in this game. I don't think I've seen anybody online that knows how long day and night are. I'll have to check again. Surely somebody at this point has figured it out. Unless they've varied it. Which I don't think they would. Because in real life it isn't really that varied either. It all depends on the time of year. And I think a turnum seems to have some sort of not only are people immortal, but the land itself is in a perpetual state of suspension too. Quack, 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 quack. 
Lots and lots and lots of turkeys. Lots of turkeys here. Well, tell you one thing. If you happen to survive on a turnip, with the number of turkeys around, you're never going to starve. Oh, look. These are back. Oh, okay, you're a boar. You know what? I don't feel like chasing you. I do feel like gathering... Oh, we're at 90, almost 91 harvesting. So, at some point... Oh, no, we're at 115 harvesting. My mistake, we get 90 harvesting just from gathering life blooms. So, I think it was, there's got to be something new coming at 125. I know for sure there's something at 175. I think it's the wire fiber. But I would think there's something before that. At least 125, maybe 150. If we can't find these last few woodlouse bait before we get back to town. We're, down, we're up to 20 of them. We're getting there. And if we have too much green wood, we can either see if we can't turn it in at the task board. Or sell it on the trading house. Or if nothing else, turn it into charcoal. Which I believe is used for other things. Oh. There's a page here. Sometimes gathering is actually a good thing. I question the wisdom of this location for rest and storage. It is beset upon nightly by wolves. There must be a den nearby. It is strange how cavalier some have become to this place. As if death was all there is to fear, and now that it has forsaken us, all care is abandoned. Okay. So, he is baffled by the condition of man. Which baffles all of us, I think, to some degree. And usually, it's the young that seem to think they are immortal. The older you get, the more you realize that, one, you don't know everything. Two, you never will know everything. Three, you are not immortal. And indeed, no life is guaranteed to any one of us. We could do everything right and take care of ourselves, which we should. Let's just say, I'm not saying we shouldn't take care of ourselves. 
and I need to do a better job of that myself. But we should take care of ourselves, but we can do all this stuff. Eat right, exercise, take care of ourselves, make sure everything is safe around us, and die anyway. Because that is the only absolute in life, is that it's finite. And the very short version of that from the great Stoics, memento mori, which essentially means life can leave you at any time. We're almost there. We have 28 of them now. And we're almost back to town, too. Oh, I think we got yep yeah, we got it of course that means once i turn them in i'll have exactly one left but we can gather more that's easy to do okay yeah you're good turkey i think i have enough for you for now and there's the town up ahead. I have gathered everything but Beardy and I cannot remember Miss Thornton's first name again. But I have to turn hers into Heloiseville. And, of course, I have to go to the task board. So, let's go this way. Property tax here is low. Everything else is moderate. Squash is about as healthy as any I've ever seen. What is then? Our crops are all getting spoiled while the ones on the farm overrun by the weather are fine. Anything else? Nothing at the moment. Okay. What you want to bet after I talk to Miss Seville, there'll be more quests. Because isn't that always the way of things? All right, upstairs. Maybe we should try not running into things. There is such thing as collision in this game. Stop off at the task board, drop off our wood louse. Oh, I'll grab the stone block. And iron ingot. I'll do that stuff off screen. Eloise, I have something for you. Oh, it's excellent to see you as always. I hear you're investigating our spoiled crops. Have we found any that aren't ruined? Oh, this corn's from Lakeside Farm. Let me see. Oh, yes. It seems to be quite healthy. That means we do have a significant quantity of food, perhaps more than we need. If the farms overrun by weeders still have healthy crops, then we must harvest them. We might even be able to use this as leverage. Leverage for what? Think about it. If the crops are failing in the territories of our neighbors, they're desperate. 
we can supply them with our healthy crops and they'll thank us for it. Could win us some allies. Better yet, an obscene profit. <laughs> In fact, the old Aruda Ranch was famous for its delicious jam. Go clear the widow there and see if you can find some unspoiled jam. It would be quite a boon. Okay. Visit Aruda Ranch and try to find some of that famous jam they make. If it's unspoiled, we're in luck. Okay, so she wants me to go to another farmstead and harvest some jam. So let's check on that. First off, we'll see there's another quest available. And Aruda is down here, not far from where we just were. Okay, wonderful. Now, who has the other quest? Excuse me. Did somebody here want to talk to me? Okay, so it's not the survivalist. It's Geardy, our favorite barkeep. This is really a great bust visit. The crops growing near the settlement are spoiled again and again lately. I just want a decent meal, you know? Well, that's understandable. I've heard the crops in Windsward are all coming up spoiled, too. I wonder if they realize the Wither Farms crops are all right. We should probably tell them. I don't know. Seville is keen on us sharing secrets with other settlements. But it's the right thing. All right. There were amazing squashes at Trace Caverns. Snatch one and take it to Barkeep Cormac in Windsward. Our secret, though. Okay. So, that one looks like it's going to end up being a Winsward quest. Well, it's technically here, but it's the turn ends at Winsward. Okay. Makes sense. Oh, and look, we can port from here to the Hermit Shrine and be right near the next two quests. Interesting. And useful. So, that's exactly what we're going to do next time. And until then, bye for now.